From KARK4 and Fox 16, this is a special report. Here's Mitch McCoy. The University of Arkansas, the state's premier university and largest academic system in the natural state, says it will require face masks in the upcoming school year. It is a story that is breaking right now. Uh, good afternoon to you. It is noon. I'm Mitch McCoy alongside Andrew Epperson from Fayetteville. Uh, Andrew, catch us up on what's breaking right now. The University of Arkansas requiring face masks in the next academic year. And the big takeaway on this is they're requiring these face masks uh, and it doesn't matter what your vaccination status is. Yeah, that's the big news there, Mitch. And we were just waiting for this information to come out over the last couple of weeks is, uh, you know, I've kept up with your stuff. This has been, um, you know, news happening left and right when it comes to masks here in Arkansas. But today, the UA system board passed a resolution saying that all its campuses needed to implement a face covering policy. And so what that'll look like here specifically in Fayetteville with the University of Arkansas, the flagship campus, we don't know yet. That's something I'm gonna be reporting on today for KWA Fox 24. I know the Clinton School has its own policy uh, at this point. And I'm sure that, you know, between our two stations, we'll be lining out what the policies are for each of the campuses here across the state in the UA system. Yeah, um, th this is a, a, a huge deal um, for, the, um, the, the state of Arkansas and as we go over here uh, to look at um, what uh, is uh, just been released by the university is uh, their, their resolution. So Andrew, uh, this was a board of trustees decision um, and they're saying that um, at the end of the day, uh, bef before returning to school, um, everyone must have a face covering. It doesn't matter what your vaccination status is, um, and they want health care or face-to-face uh, -face instruction, of course. But this is going to be required while while indoors, uh, and so this is going to be the the entire um, academic school year, uh, which I, I'm I'm somewhat um, I don't want to say surprised because I, obviously the the COVID-19 Delta variant is the, the, the sole reason for this, that it's listed there in the resolution. There's some school districts who, who will say, okay, we're gonna take this and reapproach the conversation every 30 days, every 60 days, depending on some school districts. The University of Arkansas coming out saying through the entire school year, a face covering will be required. Of course, they can always go back and um, amend it as needed, but they went with the bold decision to require it the entire year. I know something that they're worried about here, Mitch, is if the school, if classes have to move virtual, because students last year throughout the entire year, um, for many of them, their entire college experience was virtual. And as I've been doing my reporting on what the university was going to try to do, of course, a few weeks ago, there was a letter sent to the governor from leaders here at the University of Arkansas and others across the state asking that action be taken on the state's mask mandate ban. And that is because most of these university leaders think that masks can be a way to avoid going virtual. And if they can take action to do that, that's what they're gonna do. So this year long um, duration for mask policies, uh, I can imagine is tied to that desire to keep it from going virtual again and making sure that students on these campuses can have somewhat of a college experience, even if it has been warped a little bit if they've been on campus uh, starting last year, Mitch. Uh, if you're just joining us, we are following breaking news. Uh, we have just got word that the University of Arkansas will require face coverings while indoors uh, and regardless of your vaccination status. You're looking there at your screen. This is the resolution that uh, was just shared to the public a few moments ago. The University of Arkansas will require face masks while indoors regardless of your vaccination status. Uh, and we have been uh, hearing a lot of uh, institutions, uh, public schools, school districts uh, that are um, really taking an advantage at this point of a Pulaski County judge's ruling uh, last week that uh, 
barred, banned the state of Arkansas from enacting its um, ban on mask mandates. Because keep in mind, and, and Andrew, you know this, uh, just a, a week ago, um, public schools, uh, institutions like the University of Arkansas were banned from uh, imposing a mask mandate until that Pulaski County judge uh, agreed in a lawsuit to, to uh, grant a temporary restraining order blocking the state from enacting uh, or from, from uh, um, uh, imposing the, the statewide mask mandate. Yeah, and you know, most of our reporting here at KNWA has been focused on the schools themselves. Um, you know, some of the local school districts that some of them were wanting uh, to impose their own mask uh, mandates. But as you talked about, Act 1002, the state's mask ma mandate ban was a state law that prevented them from doing so. But Judge Fox, a Pulaski County judge, uh, put on a temporary injunction. And so at this point, um, people can impose mask mandates after seeking legal counsel, which some of them have done. Fayetteville has done up here in Northwest Arkansas. Yesterday, there were a slew of uh, Northwest Arkansas school districts that started to uh, vote on uh, mask mandates within their own districts. But I had reported uh, it was either two weeks ago, late in the week, or it was early in the week last week on this push at the university level for the same thing. Uh, you know, it's really looking at it. It got kind of overshadowed by some of the school districts locally discussing it because that's clearly a big deal. And I know down there, KARC and Fox 16. Uh, Y'all have been covering that as well, but uh, this was something that, that people here at the University of Arkansas wanted. You can see that video there. That's the uh, UA student body president, Coleman Warren, who he had the Arkansas student government publicly call for a mask mandate. Uh, this is all, as I said uh, just a second ago, Mitch, to avoid going virtual if cases continue to spike and it becomes unsafe for people to go to class in person. Yeah, um, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, and Andrew, the, the, there was something that um, I, I was looking at here and, and I was trying to um, get this into a position to where we can take it. Um, uh, last week, um, State Senator Trent Garner uh, sent a, a series of tweets. Uh, <clears throat> this was after the special session. Uh, and this was um, after the Pulaski County judge granted that temporary injunction uh, banning the state from um, um, enforcing the mask mandate ban. Uh, and Senator Trent Garner tweeted this. He says, as expected, a liberal extremist judge ruled against the people on mask mandates. Uh, he is allowing government to threaten you with penalties if you don't wear a mask, but they made a mistake. They didn't know what we are, that we're ready to fight. That was an exact tweet from State Senator Trent Garner, who uh, originally um, proposed the, that bill to um, ban mask mandates in Arkansas. Eventually, it became law, and, and it's now uh, an act. Uh, but this is this is what what really started this this movement uh, to ban mask mandates, and it was Trent Garner's bill. Uh, and so I was looking to see if he has shared anything yet on social media. He has not. Um, given the fact that this is one of Arkansas's, um, you know, premier universities, I mean, it is the university for the state, I, you know, I, I would be somewhat surprised if we do not hear from any lawmakers, uh, whether they support the U of A's decision or they oppose the U of A's decision, we will likely hear some kind of response at some point today from state lawmakers. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, I would agree that we'll probably hear from almost every single one of them who's been involved in this. I know earlier today, uh, I believe I saw a tweet from State Senator Greg Letting. He's a Democratic state senator in Northwest Arkansas, who he essentially uh, was saying that he was ready to hear from the U of A about whether we were going to have a mask mandate or not. Uh, you mentioned State Senator Trent Garner, a Republican down in Southern Arkansas. Uh, he's been very vocal about this because, as you said, he is the sponsor of Act 1002 which ultimately became state law. Um, and so this has been something that he's been very vocal about. Yeah, there's the, the tweet there from, from State Senator uh, Greg Letting. Uh, uh, it's great how quickly you can pull yeah. things up on your end over there, Mitch. Um, but I'm sure we will hear from just about every single one of them because a lot of the folks who are in Arkansas State Legislature graduated from the University of Arkansas or in a UA system 
uh, college or university. So uh, this is something that, as you said at the very beginning, is a very, very big deal. Um, and a lot of stuff is popping off over here today, Mitch. Yeah, um, and for folks that are just joining us, we are closely following this breaking news. Uh, the University of Arkansas, a few moments ago, has put out a resolution. The Board of Trustees have voted. They have voted to uh, put a mask mandate in place. Uh, this while uh, the, the state of Arkansas is unable to enforce their mask mandate ban. And that is because of a Pulaski County judge's ruling last week that prohibited the state of Arkansas from enforcing that mask mandate ban. Uh, the U of A now saying that regardless of your vaccination status, uh, you will be required to wear a face covering while indoors. Um, the University of Arkansas, the, the board already saying that the uh, uh, face covering ban or excuse me, the face covering requirement will be required uh, for the entire academic year. And they will, um, you know, important to note that they would likely be able to uh, put or, or amend that resolution that they have put in place. So um, it, it's worth noting here. Um, and, and, you know, I know that this decision was going to be coming down any day, uh, Andrew Epison, uh, by the way, Andrew is joining us from KNWA, our sister station in Fayetteville, um, just minutes away from the University of Arkansas campus there. So he's already beginning to, to hear reaction from folks up there at the U of A. But it, this comes just hours, Andrew, after uh, the chancellor at the University of Arkansas uh, for medical sciences, uh, Dr. Cam Patterson, UAMS, of course, the state's premier hospital system, tweeted a series of messages last night saying that schools um, returning into in-person classes should have some kind of safeguard in place, whether that be face coverings, social distancing, uh, and, and vaccines for teachers. Um, and they have to have these safeguards in place. If they don't, so those schools should be shut down. I mean, that's according to Dr. Cam Patterson at UAMS, also saying that um, schools that are returning to in-person classes with no safeguards are uh, putting the healthcare system at risk, basically saying that it will, long story short, rupture uh, our healthcare system in places. So those were Dr. Cam Patterson's tweets last night. Today, we have this bombshell announcement from U of A. Yeah, there may be a correlation there. You've spoken with Dr. Patterson many times throughout this pandemic, Mitch, and he's certainly a heavy hitter in Arkansas's healthcare community. Something else that you've reported on this week is Arkansas's situation with ICU beds, which are dwindling. Of course, yesterday, Governor Hutchinson talked about that maybe there are a few more than there were the previous day when it was down to eight. But I know that there's a lot of fear within the healthcare community, including uh, Dr. Patterson's own fear that if kids go back into school districts and they're they're not required to wear masks, a great number of them uh, will not wear masks by their own volition. And if that happens, then perhaps the case numbers could spike in a way that so many people are having to go to the hospital. We know that the Delta variant is, you know, putting more people in the hospital than the previous variant just based on the numbers and information from healthcare experts. If that happens, those ICU beds could be completely full. And at that point, people with medical emergencies that are non-COVID related or COVID related in the middle of a spike will not be able to get the attention they need if they go to a hospital. So somebody like Dr. Patterson has been very vocal about making sure that we take steps at a local, state, even federal level to make sure that kids are safe and people out in the communities are safe and masking in their minds, in the minds of many healthcare experts across the country and state, masks play a very large part in that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Andrew Epper, uh, Andrew Epperson from our, our Epperson, excuse me, from our sister station up in Fayetteville, KNWA, uh, just minutes away from the University of Arkansas, um, where this mandate has been put in place for the upcoming school year. I want to get to, um, and Andrew mentioned this uh, just a few moments ago, um, and it's related to the ICU beds in Arkansas. Of course, these are yesterday's numbers. We are expected to get new numbers in uh, just a couple of hours. As of yesterday, more than 1,400 people 
uh, in an Arkansas hospital right now, 1,435, which, by the way, uh, we broke that record two days in a row. We'll see what the numbers do today. The total number of folks in an ICU right now, 511. Uh, it is a staggering number, and as of yesterday, there are only 12 ICU beds available. Uh, 294 Arkansans are on a ventilator right now, uh, and that is also, the ventilator number is also uh, a record that has been broken now three times in just a week. So um, multiple um, uh, numbers here that are just staggering. When we look at the fact that this is affecting the healthcare system in Arkansas, uh, that, that our hospitals are being literally pushed to the brink right now, uh, we've heard that warning time and time again from officials. Uh, this while we've learned that the University of Arkansas t uh, will now require uh, face masks while indoors regardless of your, vac uh, your vaccination status. So, uh, Andrew, I know that a lot more reaction is going to be coming in. I was, I was just a minute ago checking to see if we had any more reaction from any of uh, uh, lawmakers on Twitter or on social media. I'm not seeing any just yet. But, of course, when we get that reaction, um, it'll be shared tonight. Uh, on uh, your local newscast, depending uh, or no matter where you are in the state, uh, and we will have updates on our website as well. Mitch, it's been a pleasure talking to you, my friend. Yeah, tune in to KR, Fox 16, Fox, if you're in Northwest Arkansas, Fox 24, KNWA, we'll have reactions from lawmakers and then others involved in uh, what's been a pretty crazy day filled with a lot of news, which seems to be uh, sort of the calling card for every day these days, Mitch. Yeah, it, it, it <laughs> certainly is. Andrew Epperson from our sister station, KNWA in Northwest Arkansas, just minutes away from the University of Arkansas there up in Fayetteville. We appreciate your time this afternoon. Again, if you're just joining us, let's quickly recap what we know at the noon hour. The University of Arkansas will require face masks in the next academic year. It is regardless of your vaccination status. Uh, the Board of Trustees uh, voted just a few minutes ago. They've made that decision. It is finalized. This while ICU rooms and hospitals are being inundated right now with sick people. And as health officials have said, those that are sick are much younger, which is could point to a reason to why the U of A has went ahead and made that decision just a few moments ago. Of course, all of this, while that temporary restraining order is in place, that decision made by a Pulaski County judge last week, which basically bans the state from enforcing the mask mandate ban. We'll have much more on this breaking news in your local newscast coming up at 5 o'clock. For viewers in Little Rock, it's your next newscast at 4 p.m. And of course, breaking news as it happens all day long right here on the device that you're watching. For now, I'm Mitch McCoy. This has been a special report. Have a good rest of your day.